guys, so I finally got my niacinamide powder from The Ordinary, which uh, if you're watching my recent videos, I'm loving making masks. I like to put a mask on, I don't know, three or four nights a week usually. And I love little powders like this because you can kind of customize it and add a little bit of excitement to it. I've got powders like this. I got an Arbutin powder. Um, I also have a Centella Sica powder. Uh, vitamin C powder, obviously, and now the niacinamide powder from The Ordinary. And tonight I'm going to use it in a mask, uh, rinse it off, and then I'll probably mix a couple grains of it in a serum of mine. So I was just trying to debate. Generally, if you're using the niacinamide, you don't want to use it in a product that already contains niacinamide because you don't want to use too much. Uh, too much can cause flushing, dryness, irritation. But if you get the right amount, niacinamide can be a lifesaver. It can help with so many different skin issues, pore size, uh, redness, healthiness, skin barrier. It's a good antioxidant, uh, skin brightness, pigmentation issues. So I debated between uh, three different masks, the Dr. Robux Icebergs Mask, the Polish Choice Super Hydrate Overnight Mask, which I don't use overnight, or the Tula, what do they call us, the Kiefer Ultimate Recovery Mask. And out of those, I decided to go with the Dr. Robux Icebergs Mask. Dr. Robux has, has a lot of different mask products. And I like this one. And then the Uluru Mask is uh, it's very dark red. Uh, it's a little bit of a physical exfoliant. And this one is, in my opinion, their most gentle mask. There you go, a little glob of it. Uh, it's very gentle, no fragrance, no alcohol in this one, and it does a nice job leaving your skin feeling hydrated afterwards. So I already washed my face and toned it. So I'm opening up the niacinamide powder. And what I did with the jar was I just peeled back a certain amount of it just to prevent... Where did I peel it back? It must have stuck already. I just peeled back a little bit just to prevent too much moisture from getting in there. And the ordinary, yeah, the ordinary gives you a little scoop which is super cute. I think I lost mine with their vitamin C serum, but uh, I'd recommend starting out uh, slow with a smaller amount. I certainly don't know if you want to fill the whole little thing up because uh, generally less is almost always more. So I don't know, can you see how full that is? I got about a third of the way. The granules seem very fine. So there we go, I put them on with the mask. They are very fine, so it seems like it's not going to be an issue of like a grainy feel, like when you mix this in with a water-based serum to leave on, which is nice because some of these powders can be a little bit grainy, and sometimes they just don't mix in well. There we go. So I think I'm going to leave that on for about five to ten minutes and then hop in the shower, rinse it off, and then I will um, add one more little amount to one of my favorite water-based serums. Uh, it's important to find a good water-based serum that doesn't have too many actives, too many other ingredients, something a little more simple, just because in general when you're mixing things and kind of creating your own chemistry lab, uh, it's just less likely that it could be your skin could be irritated the less chemicals you're mixing it in with. So there we go. I've got it on. I'm going to put my lip mask on, which lately I've been using the Alginist. Oh, sorry. Can you see my face again? Okay. I just like to put a little bit of that on when I mask to help my lips. And then uh, when I come back, I'll have rinsed all of this off. So, and remind me, if I ever try and do this again, never to buy another sunscreen from Dr. Jart, ever, ever. I bought another one, stupid me, I don't know, I hated the other ones I tried, but I thought this one, the ingredient list looked a lot better. And I tried it again, and it just had a terrible white cast. Every one from Dr. Jart, for me, has had a terrible white cast. And I don't know why I've tried so many of them. i am never tried another one again. I'm done. Never let me do it again, because this last one was like the final straw. I'm like... This goes on terribly. I'm already pale, but it just looks terrible. It just is so bad. I just want to do some exercising and want to put some sunscreen on before I went outside. But I had to put foundation over it because it was that bad. So remind me whenever I think about it. So, okay, I will see you in, uh, well, I'm going to hop in the shower and I'll see you in a second. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm out of the shower now. I rinse that mask off. With my skin feels really nice and uh, clean. And I cleansed with, I don't have it handy, the Crave Beauty Matcha Hemp Cleanser, which I absolutely love that cleanser. It is a great one. Won't dry out your skin, does a great job removing makeup, sunscreen, all that stuff. Uh, no fragrance and all that. So highly recommend that. So I rinsed it off. So now uh, before bed, I'm going to apply a small amount of the Ordinary Niacinamide Powder to a water-based serum of mine. And I recommend, I get a lot of questions about their vitamin C powder. Uh, people wondering if they can mix it with this oil or that oil or yada, yada, yada. And personally, I just recommend going with a water-based serum with less ingredients, the least amount of ingredients you can get in a good serum that still offers some hydration. Uh, and oils typically just don't mesh well with the grains, especially the vitamin C. So anyway, the niacinamide, I debated which serum to mix it in with. And I decided to go with the B Plain, what they call it, the Sikaful Ampule, which uh, I really like. I haven't gotten much of a chance to use it too often, but I figured I might as well give it a whirl tonight. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to do the same thing with my little spoon that they gave me. I'm going to take a small amount. And if you really want to get the benefits of niacinamide, you want to leave it on. So I just took a small scoop, and I'm going to put that in the palm of my hands. I'm going to take a, what do they call it, a pipelet, pipette, dropper bottle pipelet, pipette? I don't know, whatever. I'm trying to be all fancy with my words. And I'm going to mix that in with the niacinamide. And you know what? This uh, meshes nicely. You don't feel like the grains in it, which is really nice. Uh, some powders aren't fine enough, so you end up with a bit of graininess which doesn't feel the nicest, but this one, uh, the niacinamide just mixed in beautifully. The, the par particle size or the grain size of that is really small and it just mixes in so nicely. I don't feel any uh, bumps or any uh, kind of sandy feeling or anything. It just feels like a nice light serum. So uh, that one really worked nicely. So there we go. So if you don't include niacinamide in your teen currently, I highly recommend doing something to include it somehow, whether it's a niacinamide serum or the powder or a moisturizer with niacinamide in it. Highly recommend it. It will help your skin a ton and it's one of my favorite ingredients. So I'm thinking of doing like a video uh, in the next week or two, like a video on like each day of my favorite ingredients and my favorite products that contain it or something like that. So I'll work on that. But anyway, I thought I would share with you my uh, first thoughts on the Ordinary Niacinamide Powder. So definitely interested in hearing from you guys if you've had a chance to pick it up or if you've tried uh, any of these similar powders from different brands. I uh, love hearing from you. So leave a comment and I will see you more tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys.